Okay, we're here at the city park with Vic Cave, a candidate for city council, and we have several questions to ask. These were asked at the forum on the 16th, so in random order. Um, our first question is, can you put the needs of the citizens of this city ahead of any personal agenda and work in a civil manner and without rancor with the incumbent city council members and the mayor? Well, as I said in my opening statement, uh, that's the whole purpose. Uh, the my way or the highway system doesn't work. Uh, the mayor is in position to do administrative duties day to day and run the city on a day to day basis. The council governs the city, and the mayor is part of that governing process. But the council is there to work together and govern. Um, I believe uh, that you know there's a reason we elect multiple officials to represent us, and that's so that the will of one doesn't trump the will of the community. Well, thank you. Yeah, and thanks. So we're going to try try to keep these to about a minute. So that was good. Please describe your past community involvement in Pacific. Uh, most of my community involvement has been with the youth sports. Uh, many of the kids that uh, have come up with my kids, I've coached through the Auburn Little League. Um, as a firefighter, we were, I've been part of the Pacific Days with the fire department, the local fire department, and uh, you know, driving a fire engine through town or sitting at a booth and, and fitting bicycle helmets for kids so that they're safe when they're out riding their bikes. Okay, thanks. Um, the City Council has several standing committees, a Finance Committee, Public Works, Community uh, Service, or Human Services. Um, I mean, there might be another one I'm not thinking of right now. But uh, which of these committees do you think you're qualified to join, or uh, why do you, and why do you think you're qualified for those? Well, my business degree and background uh, with my, my education there and working with budgets in the fire department and running small teams, probably the finance committee would be a good fit for me. I'm um, pretty good with numbers. My uh, economics professor tried to discourage me from staying a firefighter and, and getting involved in the business world because I, I had a good affinity for numbers and finances. Um, but I believe I could contribute pos positively to any of the communities that the city has available to us. Okay. Have you re regularly attended City of Pacific Council workshops and City Council meetings over the last 18 months? I have not. I have uh, I had some people approach me and ask me to run for uh, City Council, and because of the turmoil that was going on, I purposely wanted to stay away from it to prevent from passing judgment. That way, if I get elected to the position, I can walk in with a clean slate and just actually look at what's on paper identify what our needs are and get from there. Prior to that I did attend several meetings over the years and have uh, commented on projects that have gone on in the city to try to help guide the council in a direction that I thought that they should go. Okay. Do you own a home or a business located within the City of Pacific? I do own a home. I've been there for uh, over 20 years now in the city. Oh, thank you. Um, question from a different questioner. A lot of these were drawn from the hat. The council makes the budget. You have to choose between cuts in public safety staff and human or youth services. Uh, the question was also put another way. Uh, do you put money into parks or uh, more infrastructure so the city can develop more? Um, where would you cut and why? Uh, until I sit down and actually look at the budget, I don't know that I would want to cut anything uh, right now. Uh, again, it gets back to my, my initial statement. I want to prioritize uh, our needs. So let's look at needs. Public safety is obviously a need. Right now, with the cut in the police force, uh, we're a target for crime in this city. And I want to get us away from being a target and create a deterrence. So public safety would be important to me, um, on the police side especially. And then again, prioritize uh, our needs and then get down to our wants, things that make us function better as a community, make us more efficient, more effective as a community, and then the luxury items, which are how do we build our community, which would get more into the parks. And so right now, parks might be a little lower based on where we're sitting as a city right now because of what's gone on in the last 18 months. Okay. Um, this question was uh, put in the box at Pacific Days. A um, woman had a metal storage container next to her house and she uh, she said that um, she was told by the city building inspector that she couldn't have it there for temporary storage. So her question was, 
Can the city code be changed to allow a storage container? The city of Algona allows storage containers on property. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a property rights uh, supporter, and I believe that unless there's a fire hazard or a threat uh, being uh, that's caused by that container, if it's your property, you own it, and you'd like to store stuff in it to keep it safe um, and to keep it from being ripped off, then why not? Um, I think the, if there's something in the code that doesn't allow it, maybe we should look at that and, and make it easy for property owners to secure their stuff because they can't, let's face it, they can't rely on our police force right now to deter crime. So if that's going to help people keep their stuff safe, then we got to make accommodations to allow for that. Okay. Uh, another questioner asked, what are your qualifications? It's funny, politicians like to talk qualifications. What makes any politician qualified to do anything? Um, what qualifies me for the job? Uh, I'm 45 years old. I've got a lot of life experience. I'm a combat veteran. Uh, I manage my own budget at home, and I'm doing quite well with it, and I can do the same for the city. Uh, if qualifications are what makes politicians effective, then we're not doing very good as a country because uh, our country is kind of a little bit of financial uh, ruin right now with the debt continuing to pile up. And if it took qualifications to be there, I'm not sure what they're qualified to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the same questioner asked, why do you want to serve? Uh, basically, I was going to get involved about five years ago when some when the city council I spoke about a, a project off of Butte, the Sunset uh, Street that was rehabbed. Um, we cut the planning commission cut the lot sizes down below 5,000 square feet. Um, and when you really take a look at that, that doesn't give a community the opportunity to bring citizens in that want to stay for the long haul. That, that those types of lots. Uh, cause turnover or get turned into rentals and not maintained very well. I think our community needs people that want to live here for the long haul and we need to make a community and build a community that does that. The Growth Management Act uh, was the excuse why we had to do it. We had to absorb so much of the population in King County. Um, I don't believe in that. Uh, I don't really believe the Growth Management Act is all that constitutional uh, from a country standpoint. Um, I think people should have the freedom to live where they want and have the room to live where they want to live in the manner in which they want to live. Uh, so when I got involved there and, and made my statement that as families stay there and grow, um, they tend to get toys. And so if the average family has two cars and then as they can afford it, they buy a recreational vehicle, they need a place to park it. And 3,500 square feet just isn't enough to do that on. So um, I had the council support me back then and asked if I would get involved on the council because they didn't have anyone that ever showed that type of insight to come to the meetings and they thought that I'd be a good fit then. But it wasn't a fit for me with the kids at the age that they were and the things that I were doing. Now that my kids are a little older, I have a little bit more time and can get involved. Okay. Um, let's see. I think we've covered the third question was how long have you been active in city affairs? And uh, we have a question from that was emailed in. Um, do you have a criminal record? If so, please elaborate. Uh, not really, not that I can think of. I mean, uh, yeah, I've probably had a speeding ticket over my lifetime once in a while, or a parking ticket here and there. Um, and yeah, the fishing game have cited me for not marking my salmon down on my catch card. That's about the, the extent of it. <laughs> so, but I haven't taken more than I'm allowed. And, uh, I, I'm not a criminal. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, her next question is, uh, for those that are n running for council and do not attend current council meetings, you're running for council. Why is it that you do not attend council meetings? Well, I think you answered that. Do you feel that you have enough knowledge of how council works? Yes, uh, it's governing body. It's n not unlike any governing body, whether you're part of a Auburn Little League, they have a governing body that governs them, and they have a, ma a budget to manage, and they have a uh, mission statement that they that guides them in the direction they're supposed to go. The City of Pacific is no different. The City of Pacific has a mission statement. I couldn't recite it to you verbatim right now, but uh, you know their duties and responsibilities to the community are there, and anyone who has a sense of duty understands what that is. Again, if you don't have a hidden agenda out there where you're trying to accomplish something or circumvent something or become, becoming part of the governing process, then it's just 
you know, goodwill and having your heart in the right place and doing the right thing. Okay. Uh, kind of a follow-up to that, I recall a question was asked about the um, the city's comprehensive plan, which was worked on and has been revised, and that's kind of like the mission statement. Um, have you uh, read the comprehensive plan? Um, about five years ago I read it, and I know it's been modified and changed. I, I haven't read the, the updated version of it, and basically a comprehensive plan is, you know, where our growth management boundaries are, where the potential boundaries could be in the future, uh, because every city, um, the state through the Growth Management Act has required each city to look at portions of their counties and, and look where they can expand the borders to absorb the, the population to keep more open areas uh, out in the country and, and to preserve our farming communities and our timber uh, areas. Uh, so un I understand what the comprehensive plan is. While I haven't read the full plan uh, recently to know where it's at, again, it's been modified under an old administration and it will need to be revisited under a new one. Okay, thank you. Um, this one came from Pacific Days. Uh, what would you do to help rebuild the image of Pacific to a positive image? Again, just doing the right thing. I think uh, being soft-spoken and behind the scenes, guiding the city in a positive direction will do more than being out front stumping and, and, you know, putting the spotlight on me. It's not about me. It's about the city itself and, and the citizens and moving it in a direction that the majority of the citizens would like it to go. For me, um, as a citizen, I like to see a community that uh, where we know our neighbors, uh, talk to them once in a while, and look out for each other. And right now, we're moving away from that. And part of that's just beginning with the times, we're becoming busier as families and we don't have a lot of time to spend with our neighbors because we're spending so much time with our, our kids and being more involved as parents now um, than the generations that raised us. But uh, I think we can build a positive image. Again, uh, we got back to where would you prioritize things. As we fixed our needs and got our wants settled and straightened out, um, the luxury items like building our park and getting our baseball field back uh, to a, a usable state so that the kids have a place to recreate themselves and, and we can bring Little League in and, and have a place where people could walk to the park and watch a Little League game. I think those are positive things that we can work toward and, and make this city a better place to live. I misplaced a question. Um, I recall it being asked. I know I saw it in here. Uh, what would be your top five priorities for the city council in uh, policy making or budgeting areas? Uh, Number one is identifying our shortfall in the police uh, staffing, um, ensuring that we, we take care of that. Number two would be addressing the lawsuits that came of the last administration and trying to get the, the slate cleaned up there so that we can get moving forward rather than focusing on the past. Uh, again, then prioritizing our needs and then prioritizing our wants and then looking at what luxuries we can we can bring in as we can afford it to, to build. And one thing I'd like to mention with that, when you are prioritizing, you put together a budget. The city works on a fiscal budget, so their money is collected for one year. Um, we have a general fund where we can allow some overage to go into, but when you make your priorities, if a need can't get funded that particular year, I don't see a reason unless there's a stipulation in the governance of, of the budget that doesn't allow for that money to be moved into an area to fix one of the wants that we might have. And so if we, we have a need but we have something right below it in the same line item that will make us more efficient and, and effective and we can't take care of the need that year in that fiscal cycle, then we move that money down and, and build that want up so that we can be more efficient and effective and, and, and work the priorities, you know, the best you can, you know, to get the needs taken care of. Sometimes needs take longer to fill and address than, than our wants, and so uh, we have the ability to work on all of it, and it's just where do we emphasize, and that's where I would, how I would work it. Okay, one last question. Why should I vote for you rather than one of the other candidates? Uh, it's not a matter of why you should vote for me over someone else. It's it's look at what we stand for, what you believe you can get out of us when we're there. 
Um, I don't know Mr. Stuckey, my, my partner, or, or, or running uh, opposition, and Leanne has accepted the mayoral position. I assume she'll keep it, um, but I'm sure they're good people, and they want to do the right thing for the city and make it better, and that's all I'm out there to do, too. Hopefully, I've given you enough information that will show you where my heart lies uh, and trying to fix things. Um, I'm not so conservative that I want to question every little penny that gets spent uh, from every department head, but I do want to see our department head staffed and, and get input from the subject matter experts for each department so that we can move forward as a city and, and see where we're going to uh, be in another two years. And hopefully we can put the last 18 months behind us and move forward, and two years from now we're looking at uh, a mayoral race that the mayor doesn't have to focus on uh, fixing something that has disintegrated and uh, we're on track and can move forward and, and again look at our priorities and, and start addressing those needs. Okay, thank you. Well this concludes the question and answer portion and then we'll cut, give you a break and uh, then you can make a two minutes closing statement. Okay.